we want to make sure to really um, thank every one of you for coming tonight, um, especially extend a thank you to the Carlo family. Thank you for being here. Um, this has been a long day coming. It's kind of bittersweet for us. We had hoped to be able to do the open house while Paldean was still with us physically, but we do know that she's with us in spirit and probably just smiling real hard from ear to ear to see all of us here celebrating her legacy. Um, as the board president, I've been involved with FNA now for um, about four years, and in that time, you know, we have meetings every other month, and Paul Dean would come to those meetings. She would never miss a meeting. She would always come to our strategic planning events, and she would always deliver remarks and share about the history of FNA, and she would remind us about its humble beginnings and how it would start often in you know her home, um, in the homes of others. And they would you know, often just put a um, can around to be able to donate towards coffee and things like that. And to think that in 50 years it's grown to the organization that it is, is incredible. We've grown physically, financially, human capacity wise to be able to deliver um, quality services to our people here in the Fairbanks area. It's really truly amazing. We are so proud today to be able to dedicate this building in her honor. I'm so excited for all of you that haven't been into the facility yet to be able to go and see it. Um, Paul Dean would often you know, remind us in her lifetime of the struggle that our Native people had living in Fairbanks and how during her lifetime there were signs that said, you know, no dogs, no Natives allowed. And to think now we have this multi-million dollar facility that has some of the best that um, you know, we can offer in terms of education for our youngest tribal members and others in the community is amazing. So we're really proud of it, and we just want to thank her, thank the family for all that she contributed to FNA. I want to thank all of you for being here. Um, you know, I, I, um, about a year and a half before Pauline had passed away, in our board meetings, she would often uh, suggest that we name this new building after her. So uh, today, uh, we're going to be dedicating this building in her name. And I, I think it's truly uh, reflective of the many years, 50 plus years, that she was uh, the forefront of uh, Fairbanks Native Association, and many of the things she advocated for is what we're going to be doing in this building behind me, educating our young people, teaching our kids Native singing and drumming, um, teaching our young, young kids, providing them an education. All these things are what Pauline often talked about. And I, I, I'm truly uh, honored to be part of this today, to be here, to uh, be part of the celebration and reflecting back on the many uh, words that she had provided, with, provided me. Um, some of them were comical, some of them were serious, uh, but uh, you know, I did her eulogy and uh, during that eulogy, I kind of talked about, uh, uh, she was telling me that back in 1960s, Wally Hickel wanted to build a uh, hotel here in Fairbanks. So he's asking for donations. So one day when she came to the office, uh, she showed me a, a copy of that check. Uh, well, first she came by and she told me this and um, I guess I looked like I wasn't believing her. So the next day she came back and she showed me that check. And uh, then she goes on to say that, you know, later on he became the uh, uh, Secretary of Interior, then became governor of the state of Alaska. He got rich and she said, you know what? He never did pay me back. <laughs> so. Uh, so, I, you know, uh, of course she's just joking, but uh, that's just the way she was. Um, so, you know, I'm really pleased to be part of this today, and I want to thank you all for being here. I want to thank my staff uh, for 
decorating this uh, this year. Uh, my facilities people for helping out and uh, setting this thing up. Uh, some of them are still in there. Uh, they're, they're waiting for me to uh, give them a signal to bring the food out. I told them I want to make sure it's warm. So uh, with that, I'll um, conclude my remarks. And again, I'm I'm really uh, appreciative of being part of this. Um, you know, we got uh, $4 million from the federal government. Uh, we purchased this building here for $3.1 million. It cost over $2 million to renovate it. Um, and there's other people that's going to speak here after me that's been instrumental in helping us secure those funding. So um, we moved in here in March. We started our move during the uh, Tana Chiefs Conference. Uh, so we're officially in here. And um, the only other program that hasn't moved in here is uh, the old Foodland building. We, they call it the McKinley building, where we have some kids in there. We got a couple of years more left on the um, the lease on that. And uh, we still have one more section uh, to renovate here. That's going to cost $1.2 million. And we're working to uh, secure funds to get that done as well. So it took a lot of work, uh, a lot of uh, partnerships, uh, and a good working board uh, that helped us guide us through some of this stuff. And so I'm really proud to be part of it. So thank you again for being here. Masicho.
and we call upon the name of God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for Pauline, all the things that she did for us that continues to go in, among our people. Even the children get a chance to be a part of it. The things that she was so adamantly involved in, the legacy of our native people, and the legacy of our people. We thank you for Pauline and what she did for us, and we continue to go in that. May your blessing be upon the leaders that come here to share this with us. The food that they, is so important to Pauline and her family that she fed all the people that came into the North American. She took them down and gave them a big potluck because food was a very important part of our culture. So we thank you for this time. Thank you for prayer. Thank you for all that you give to us. Blessing of uh, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Be with us and remain with us always. Amen. Thank you. Bless you. One, two, three. Oh. <laughs> There you are, Pauline Carlo building. And behind that, uh, after later on when you go into the facility, as you're coming out, there's an uh, inscription behind it. It's written in Koyakon, and it means uh, somewhere along the lines of have a blessed day and safe travels. This is what it says behind the sign here. So, again, welcome to the Pauline Carlo Building. This building has been a dream for the program. Um, we're excited about bringing families together like Steve had talked about. We have phase one and two, where we have the um, children from the 609 building and the children from the Pauline Carlo Building. So this is Trevandia. She has done an amazing job of advocating for us um, at the Office of Head Start for Alaskan programs. She um, works with all of the Region 11 programs, and those are the um, Alaskan Native programs. So if you wanted to. Good afternoon. I'm glad to be here today to celebrate with you all. Um, I bring you greetings from the Office of Head Start, Department of Health and Human Services in Washington, D.C. As Katrina said, I serve all of the tribal, native tribal programs in Alaska that has Head Start and early Head Start program. So I was sharing with the rest of the team today, we had eight facility projects ongoing in Alaska in the last three years. And FNA is one of our grantees um, that we're here to celebrate today. So we're just happy to be here. I'm happy to see it go from paper to product, from design to build. I was here when you all chose the building and I came through and did a walkthrough. So it's just amazing to see um, what's going on for children and families in Alaska. And I'm just glad to be a part of it. And thank you for having me here today. And thank you for honoring um, Pauline Carlo. Um, I've had the opportunity to see the other facility that was named after her as well. So I'm just glad to be a part of your celebration and thank you for having me here, thank you. And when we go down to Juneau, you know, we have our squabbles and things like that. But in Fairbanks, if there's a car on the side of the road with its hazard lights on, everybody stops to see if that person's okay. And that's the kind of generosity, that's the kind of public service that Holding and Carlo um, has really exemplified.
up her last day, she, she talked about Steve, the leadership of FNA, the, the good staff that they have, the board members that are really working as a, as a team. No personal agendas, just strictly working together to, to make things like this happen. And it's wonderful. So with that, we want to thank you as, you know, the Carlo family and all the friends and relatives we have here. Thank you very much.